Elevation 44. It's your girl B. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back, family. Today, we're going to be diving all into the Cancer Full Moon, which is happening on Tuesday, December 29th. It's happening at 1027 p.m. Eastern Time. So you're going to have to translate that to your local time zone. If you are ahead in time, um, in terms of being ahead of the Eastern Time, then this moon will likely fall for you on December 30th, which is Wednesday. So it could be the 30th or the 29th, depending on your time zone, okay? Now, this um, moon, this full moon is happening at eight degrees, okay? And in numerology, eight is the number of balance, it's the number of success, it's the number of abundance, okay? So there is some exciting qualities to this full moon that's coming in, and this theme is going to be, um, this theme of abundance and preparing for success is going to be definitely woven into the message as I dive into all the details, okay? Now, if you're new to working with moon energy, the best times to capitalize on you know doing your moon rituals and everything specifically around the full moon would be three days around the full moon. So the day prior to the full moon, the day of the full moon, and the day after is when the energy is the most potent and when I would recommend that you work with the full moon. Now, I have an entire video where I discuss like the baseline fundamentals so you have a deeper understanding of what moon energy is, how to work with the full moon specifically, and things that you can do for any full moon. So I'm going to go ahead and link that down in the description box or somewhere up here so that you can get to that information easily, okay? So with the moon being in Cancer, it is at home here, okay? Because the moon rules cancer, okay? It rules that energy. So this is where the moon is going to function its strongest. So this is feminine energy and this is receptive energy because it's feminine energy, okay? And this is a time where we are receiving, where we receive healing, where we receive abundance, where we receive information. It's just a receptive time where we absorb, okay? So that is a lot of the energy that this um, this moon is bringing in for us, okay? Now, Cancer, in, in terms of the abundance piece and receiving, Cancer is the money sign. When I say it is the money sign, it's because Cancer is ruled by the moon and the moon rules current or currency, okay? And what is the other word for money? What else do we call it? We call it currency. So this is a time, um, th this energy where the moon is in its home sign of cancer, this is a time where we can expand greatly in resources and wealth and receiving abundance in all forms, okay? So this is something to definitely, definitely <laughs> capitalize on while this moon is being placed here. So attracting that wealth is definitely what you want to be um, focusing on too. Now, like I said, with in terms of the reception of abundance and resources and all of that good stuff, this energy really is helping us to prepare ourselves for the abundance. It's that <laughs> preparation, again, receiving the healing, receiving whatever we need to get that, right? And what's happening is, even though a lot of us are excited about what's to come, the new era, everything that, you know, 2021 and beyond, you know, holds for us, there's still a lot of mindsets um, that need to be transformed in order to be in a space of full receiving, okay? So what's happening is on the surface level, a lot of us are in the space of wanting to move forward, wanting to be excited about everything that is ahead but then there hasn't been a real shift of your paradigm or your mindset in order to be in a space to receive that so that can be blocking the blessings the opportunity the resources and the things that can be coming in for you and that's really due to just holding on to past stuff so we're going to get into that 
in a second okay so let's talk about the details of this cancerian energy the element here is water so this is all about emotional intelligence okay the mode is cardinal this is cardinal energy which means it's starting energy this is the initiation energy the ones that get things off and popping and get things rolling okay so that's what this energy is the um the ruling body <laughs> I wanted to say planet but the moon is not really a planet is the moon okay the house that um, cancer rules is the fourth house which is all about our private life so this is the our family this is our home this is our ancestral roots this is our private life okay um, the polarity of Cancerian energy is Capricorn, okay? And this is your public life. So this rules your career, your work, and your public image. So that's why those, um, those two are contrasting or polar opposite energies, okay? The gifts of um, Cancer is intuitive. Again, emotional intelligence, sensitive, sympathetic, resilient, protective, nurturing, loyal, imaginative, and creative. Very, very creative sign as well. And that's one thing that it also shares with Capricorn, um, which is its polar opposite. There is a creativity, but it happens on different levels. Some of the challenges um, with this energy, because if I'm going to give you the gifts, I'm going to give you the challenges, is that this energy can make you overly sensitive or, you know, easily wounded, overly emotional, moody, possessive, critical, and codependent said the focus is helping us prepare ourselves for the abundance that lies ahead everything that awaits us especially as we're moving into just this entirely new era this um there's so many things so many unknowns that uh, you know wait of course there are going to be challenges but there are lots of positive things that lie ahead for us okay so this is a time where it's out with the old and welcoming in the new and we're excited about that like i said at the beginning of the video on a surface level but we are still holding on a lot of us to some deep rooted subconscious mindsets that are um, primarily rooted in fear. So this is the time to be receptive. If you're in a space where you're ready to move forward and receive the abundance and the success and everything, that's great. But if you're still in a space where you need to do some mindset shifting, this is a time to receive the healing to allow you to release all of that, okay? So this is all about breaking those mindsets that are holding us back, shifting the paradigm, all right? So let's talk about some of the transits happening during the time of the full moon. The first one is that the moon is going to be sextiling Uranus or Uranus in Taurus, okay? So this is a harmonious aspect, the moon being our emotions, Uranus really representing change, um, you know, originality, progression, um, freedom, that type of energy. So what this is helping us do is like really embrace change right really like open our arms and welcome change we're getting excited it's giving us an excitement it's giving us some inspiration and we're excited for new opportunities we're excited for you know new things we're excited for new friendships we're excited for um new relationships we're excited for just so many new things that lie ahead things that we have no idea even exist yet right but we just know that there's something new that lies ahead and we're excited for that but this is also helping us to break those old habits the, ha the habits that prevent us from getting there to from getting to the new from getting to the prizes so this is a great energy um, for us to have especially as we are um, definitely as a society changing our values the things that we value and you know all of that stuff so this is this is energy that you need to capitalize on but on the flip side of that even though that energy is very supportive and harmonious and helping us we have the moon that is at conflict with mercury so it's going to be opposing or opposite mercury and a moon, the moon again which rules our emotions and our inner selves and our inner needs and mercury which is about our communication and our thinking this makes a head and a heart conflict okay so the head and the heart at, are at conflict they're arguing with each other <laughs> they're not on the same page and we want to get them on the same accord that's what this whole thing is about right 
So this can cause scrambled thoughts and communication again due to hidden emotions, things that are lying beneath coming up to the surface, okay? So these are our fears, our insecurities, our anxieties um, about the things that we've experienced in the past that keep us from fully embracing what is um what can be possible for us okay so it kind of has us with those you know those seeds of doubt like yeah i think that's possible but um you know my past history has told me otherwise right um or i've never been able to do this before so why would i be able to do this now why would i be able to have this now or why would it look different now or how could it look different because i can't picture or imagine it how can it look different so again it's about getting your head and your heart in one accord okay so this is not a time to really be engaging in a conversation with others because of that scramble of communication it can be very emotional time um, things can be misconstrued or you know misinterpreted and then with the emotions flaring up it just can lead to arguments and to, to disaster in that way so I would not en um, engage in any types of you know back and forth conversation in that way, I would definitely utilize this energy more so for conversation with self and getting your head and heart in alignment, okay? So working through what's holding you back, what are the fears, what are those subconscious things that you're holding onto that are keeping you from moving forward fully, okay? So that are the, those are the transits that are happening. Let's get into the herbs and the crystals. The herbs that you can work with during um, this full moon are protective healing um, around you know success and abundance and luck, okay? So the first is aloe, um, then we have eucalyptus, jasmine, um, mugwort is great for dreams, um, which I'll get to in a second when I get to the rituals. We have lemon balm, um, myrrh, and then we have also our sea plants, which are great with this energy, which is your sea plants like Irish moss or sea moss, you know, they're both the same thing, and um, bladder rack, okay? So I would definitely utilize some of these herbs as you do your rituals and everything else um, for the week. And then some of the crystals that you can work with are moonstone, which is great for new beginnings and helping you accept change, okay? Um, selenite, which is great for you to connect to the higher realms and get that wisdom, or, and also to just help you move past those blockages. Um, celestite, which is um, good for your intuition and in, in boosting that. Um, carnelian for creativity and jet for impact protection because Cancerian energy also makes you super, super like um, empathetic or sensitive and you can, again, it's that receptive energy where we're absorbing and we're receiving and that means we could be receiving energy and lots of things and signals around us. So this is, um, jet is great for helping you put up some protection so that you're not sucking everything in, all right? Let's get into the rituals. Now with the Cancer full moon, because the full moon or the moon is gonna be in its home sign, you could pretty much do a lot of rituals, pretty much almost any ritual that you can think of, you can do it during this time because this moon is gonna be in its strongest position, okay? But here are some of the ones that I'm gonna highlight that I would recommend you thinking about. The first is, because cancer is all about that, um, you know, your, your, your roots and your ancestral connections, definitely doing something with connecting with your ancestors. So whether that be healing, um, you know, generational stuff, working through generational things, connecting with your ancestors in that way, or gratitude, if you know, you are connected with your ancestors, showing them some gratitude, maybe giving an offering, something in the lines of connecting with your ancestors. I hope you get the point. The next thing that I would um, think about doing, again, because it is connected to that roots, is maybe past life um, recall or past life regression, which helps you also identify some of your gifts, maybe even helping you on a subconscious level figure out why you have some of the fears that you have and why you hold on to some of the things you know that you are holding on to that's keeping you from moving forward, or identifying, like I said, some of the gifts or your strengths or some of the things that you have that you can take ahead with you into you know where you're going next so past life regression is a very 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 important thing um, if you can try to do it i would definitely recommend it because it's very powerful 
also creative expression because this is all about creativity um, so however you express yourself creatively you can do that through art you know building something making something music writing i mean the 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 list is endless how you can express yourself creatively um creativity creatively <laughs> anyway psychic development okay is another big um thing that i would recommend during this time so developing your psychic senses um the clairs okay so you can do divination you can do astral projection you can do automatic writing mediumship tel uh, telepathy i mean literally it goes on and on and on there are so many different psychic gifts but i've just named a couple so you get the gist right Dream work, dream work helps you see what's in your subconscious and your unconscious mind, okay? A lot of the times in our dreams, it all comes spilling out and some people are better at being able to get those messages in the dream space and to figure things out in the dream world than in, you know, waking life, okay? So definitely, definitely um, dive into your dream work and, you know, See what kind of messages that you get there and see what kind of things you can work through in that space and what comes up to the surface and the last thing that i will say is because this is the money sign we're talking about a money and abundance ritual so you know again when we talk about the fertility thing of bringing new things in come on let's bring some new money in <laughs> let's let's bring some new and and listen abundance doesn't have to be just money based. Abundance can come in in all forms and relationships and love for self and in, in, in health. And there's so many ways that you can call in abundance. So doing a money or abundance ritual is definitely going to do you well during this time, okay? So that is it. That is all I have for you today. I hope you found this um, information useful i felt like my communication was a little scrambled or my thoughts were a little scrambled in this video so i hope this all came out very clear um and that you're able to pull something out of it to help you with your um you know full moon rituals or whatnot and your healing and your progression so um let me know down in the comments below if you are team cancer where my cancer is at okay cancer sun here so i want to hear from my cancer suns my cancer moons my cancer risings and any cancer placements you have hit me down in the comments below also let me know what you're doing for your full moon ritual okay i always like to see what other people are doing as well okay so i will see you all in the next video make sure you subscribe if you haven't already hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss another video and i will see you all in the next one peace